Today on Retail Reviews, we are going to be talking about, that's right, The Legend of Zelda. Now, this is a game that I have talked about so much that my plan is to really, I want to hear what these guys have to say before I say much, because I think people are sick to death of hearing me talk about Zelda. So what do you guys have to say about the original Legend of Zelda? I, I thought I thought it was crazy when we decided, we're like, hey, what are we going to talk about on Retail Reviews? And we said, oh, we're talking about The Legend of Zelda. And it's... You know, there, there's so much to say about it, but there's so much that has been said about it. So you really kind of have to focus the conversation on something that, you know, we haven't talked about before. Mm -hmm. And I I spent a lot of time just writing about, you know, th this is cool about Zelda and this isn't cool and this is going on and all of that. But the point that I really wanted to make to everyone is that Zelda is the most influential game of the 8-bit era entirely full stop period and i wholeheartedly believe that now a lot of people may bring out mario they may bring out games like contra they may bring out games like final fantasy but i think zelda takes the cake i think it's the top in terms of influence from way back in nes super nintendo all of that all the way to today well I li i'd like to go through that why would you say it's more influential than mario i think that mario does a really good job at just being an excellent platformer. And I I think that it 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 influenced it was massively influential. Don't get me wrong. Super Mario Brothers massively influential. But its influence wanes as time goes on. Whereas I feel like Zelda its influence has actually gone up as time has gone on. Look at modern games like Skyrim or a modern game like Dark Souls. Mm -hmm. um, so, ma so many games or Uncharted or just any game like that. It takes cues from, from Zelda. It definitely Dark Souls. Dark yeah. Souls is cryptic. It doesn't tell the story really through cutscenes more as just you playing it. The same way the original Legend of Zelda did. There was no real... The, you know, you'd walk into a room and a guy would say stuff to you about buying stuff but there was no cutscenes or anything like that and and it was more just about your interaction with the world and, and then I, and then i think a lot of people you know so we talked about super mario brothers but a lot of people will also look at a game like metroid and say how many metroidvanias are there out there all mm -hmm. of that but i think zelda actually does better because i think it's a more complete and finished experience i think zelda is a much more premium experience than Metroid is. There's things like Metroid doesn't have a map. Mm -hmm. That really hurts it. Metroid doesn't have- Zelda, the, Zelda had a map, Ryan. There it is. <laughs> yeah. I remember being a kid and one of my first exposures to Zelda was being on the school bus and somebody had the map, the box or, or just the map or something on the school bus, on the school bus and I had never seen a map uh, with a video with a video game it would that was that was a new thing back then and and I mean look at that name an NES game That has such a rich and, and beautiful world Prior to Zelda. Yeah Now Pe remember, people, Zelda people will shout out uh, adventure For Atari. Oh for the Atari, sure, which sure I, they I will. love adventure. That's actually a game that I uh, It's the only uh, it's it's my favorite Atari game other than uh, pitfall yeah, uh, but I, I love adventure just because of the simplicity of it, and I like that it you know it was it, it's it kind of led to a lot of these games, but it's not it's influential to games that maybe of that era, but not like nobody's gonna sit there and say, oh yeah, without uh, without adventure we wouldn't have Skyrim. <laughs> nah, I like I, I think without Zelda or without you know adventure you might not have had zelda or you might have it just would have been well i think better. the difference there is that you know with adventure it's really just a little pixel going around with zelda you have actual characters you have link and back then you know there was a cartoon based on it and you know you have this character with the green hat and the tunic and the sword and the shield zelda was a game that um broadened your imagination you know when i was a kid i you know i remember going out and playing with um friends and pretending we were in hyrule i know that james used to draw legend of zelda comics which he had to post on the website and i think a lot of kids 
at the time got invested in that world. And I'm talking about the NES Zelda. I'm not even talking about, you know, Ocarina of Time or Link to the Past. I'm talking about when the NES game was out. And I think that that's something people forget because now people look back at um, Zelda and they talk so much about Ocarina of Time and how influential that game is. And I feel like all the lists that you'll read online and, and whatnot will mark Ocarina of Time as, you know, such a um, influential game. And it was, but Zelda, the first game, like blew everyone's socks off. And I think people forget that because so many other Zelda games came after that blew people's socks off. Link to the Past blew everybody's socks off. They, they just kept, you know, making great game after great game, you know, and it, it's a great series. But I'm glad that we're doing this because it's important to talk about um, where this originally came from. And one thing that I do want to say, people ask me all the time, uh, people love to ask about favorites. What's your favorite movie? What's your favorite thing? You know, so I stream mostly video games. So people, the most asked question I get, period, is what is your favorite video game? So my go-to answer it has always been The Legend of Zelda on NES, mainly because I need an answer. I, I'm, I'm just like, that's the game. I also love Doom, and I, you know, I, there's so many other games that I love, but I just, I kind of just toss that out there as an answer. But there are some days when I don't feel like playing Zelda. Zelda, but I, you know, I'm like that with video games. Like I might not want to play Doom one day, but another day I'm like, all I want to play is Doom. So I, ju I just want to say that is like, I don't, just because it's my favorite game, it's like listening to your favorite song or something. You can wear out your favorite song and you can wear out your favorite game. I feel like at this point in my life, I've kind of worn out this game, but that's where randomizers come in. And that is something that has uh, given new breath and a new life for me for the original Zelda. So one of the things that, that you said earlier there that was one of my big points about why Zelda is great, and that was you were talking about the bombs and you were talking about the shield and you were talking about the characters and the adventures that you had in Hyrule, even though this is an 8-bit NES game on a cartridge. And really what I think it comes to is you know, Zelda has a clear aesthetic and it has memorable characters and a clear art design. Those bombs that you saw way back in the 80s are the same bombs that you see in a brand new Zelda game today. Mm -hmm. Link, the character, how the Master Sword looks, how the boomerangs, the arrows, everything. All of these pieces work together to form a believable world. Before you get off of the bombs, can I say something about the bombs in Zelda? Sure. So, so in Link to the Past, something that bothered me is how you'll always see a cracked wall in Link to the Past, which a yeah. lot, which shows you, um, you know, where the placement is. But it's like it might as well be an open door at that point because the right. secret the secret is gone at that point. It's like, oh, there's a crack there. You can bomb there. That's why like in the original Zelda, there there is no crack, so you have to find it on your own. That it's a mystery. And when you do bomb it and there and it does get revealed, it's like da 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 oh my god. Like I didn't know that was gonna be there. There's no secret if there's a crack in the wall. It always that bugged me. <laughs> Let's talk about secrets and mystery a little bit when it comes to Zelda. Every Zelda that followed except for maybe Breath of the Wild, honestly, telegraphed everything that was gonna happen, removed all the mystery, removed everything. If you play Legend of Zelda for the first time and you find out that you can burn a bush, you gotta burn every bush in the whole damn game mm -hmm. because there could be something there. Oh, you're gonna bomb every wall that you find because there could be something there. There's there's mystery behind every corner and it's not always a heart piece or a power up or something. It could be a shop. It could be somebody who says something cryptic. It that could old be man anything. who's gonna take your money. <laughs> it could be yeah. it could be somebody robbing you. That's like, why I mean that's why I would say that if any game takes so much from Legend of Zelda, it's the Dark Souls series because yeah. there's so many things in there that you have to just use an item or go in this area. I mean, you, Mike, you were the one who told me about that place in Blight Town uh, where you could just, you, you hit a wall and it opens up an entire new area of the game that I'd never seen. And I've played through that game a few times and it's like, 
you then you have to sit there and you get to the point where you're smacking every wall with your sword to see if it's an illusionary wall or whatever. This game, uh, when they, they didn't give you the answers, it forced you through trial and error to figure your way out through the game. There was no specific way to play the game. You had to just go about it. If, if one way didn't work, you tried a different way. And that's what was so... It, you were discovering the world as much as if you were just walking through it. And, and Zelda really lost its non-linear path mm -hmm. after the original Legend of Zelda. Like, even Zelda 2, Link to the Past, yeah, you may be able to shuffle a dungeon here and there, yeah. or something like that. Well, you can explore the entire world, but there is a set pathway through it. I mean, you yeah. have to go to this dungeon before you can do that dungeon, because you need to get this item before you can go over here. And you could buy keys in shops and kind of cheat your way through different dungeons. You can, you can cheat your way by buying the keys if you have to, but yeah. Yeah. I, I, just, I just think that that's so cool. Another thing, Zelda created a division between regular RPGs and then there's this action RPG thing over here. And I think the main differentiator is does your RPG progress primarily with stats or does it progress with story or items or anything like that? And that gets more into like the Metroidvania kind of thing. Oh, I got the double jump. Now I can go over here. Mm -hmm. Oh, I got the raft. I got the bombs. I got you know, later in Zelda's the hookshot and things like that, I can move forward. I think that this type of progression, the, the Zelda type, is so much more satisfying to, than, oh, I got level seven, so now I can go over yeah, here. Or I gotta run through the grass for two hours and grind so I can beat this boss later on or whatever. Yeah. Oh well, yeah, I mean, is, I, you might be talking, I don't know exactly what you're talking about with, with the grinding, but um, if you're referring to Zelda 2, you don't have to grind with uh, Zelda 2 to, to get through it, but uh, it, it, it helps if you're having trouble with it. No, I just mean more like generic RPG, like Final Fantasy, uh, Pokemon even, think yeah. games like that where the way to beat something is you have to keep fighting the same few enemies over and over again to level your guy up. Rather than in Zelda where it does come down to, you know, yeah, you can get more hearts, but it does come down to how you play the game. It's not yeah. based on this enemy's way stronger than me because I haven't, you know, fought enough... Uh, Ratataz or yeah. whatever, you know, like the Zelda progression. What I was saying is that you don't grind in Zelda. Zelda progression is about your skill. And sure you might get a few different hearts along the way and things like that, but it's really more about you. And figuring, yeah. Like it yeah. It takes brain power. Well I think what's cool with Zelda and um what you're talking about is that, you know, when you first play the game and this is why it has some like long longevity to me, uh you play the game and you might have to get every single heart and every single potion, you know, and be totally maxed out to be able to beat the game. And you probably will the first time you play the game, I'm sure. But then you can go back to it the next time and then you can start putting like limits on yourself. You say, this time yeah. I'm not gonna uh, get all the hearts. I'm only gonna get some, some of the hearts or I'm only gonna get three hearts or I'm not gonna use potions. And by setting limits to, on yourself, you make the game harder and harder and harder like on yourself and i love doing that with zelda i've done lots of it i've done the you beat it without quest. a sword right the swordless quest oh, really? I yeah I, and you know yeah. doing um I, I recently did the uh second quest uh swordless and all that and i had to bring up the second quest in in zelda the first zelda game so a lot of old nes games like ghosts and goblins castlevania contra you know, the list goes on, would have multiple loops. And Zelda had uh, a second loop, uh, the, the second quest. And I think that that is something also that uh, gives you so much more to the game because now you're going into the game the second time, but now all the dungeons are in a different place and all the dungeons are totally different. Um, so it, it's like giving you two games in one, almost. And um, Link to the Past doesn't do that. Link to the Past no. also forces you to get the sword, so you can't do things like a swordless quest. And while I love Link to the Past, I remember getting it um, for Christmas as a kid. I absolutely love this game, and I still I still love it. But I just find that there's more things that you can do in Zelda One uh, as the years go by if you want to keep coming back. And I think that's the mark of a good game is that if you played it. 
twice, three times, four times, but can you play it 100 times without getting bored? Can you play it 500 times without getting bored? Those are the best games that you can keep coming back to. I think Doom is a game like that. Like, you, I can always come back to Doom, you know? I, yeah. I, I want to mention something a little nerdy and a little game designery, but I think it's really important to mention. Zelda has U user interface, UI, and user experience, UX, that are far above the vast majority of games of its time. The idea that you can remap different power-ups to, to the, the button, you could switch from the arrows to the boomerang to all of those. The fact that you have a menu, look at the menus in Zelda versus the menu in Mega Man, mm -hmm. for instance. Mega Man didn't get a, a menu on the level of Zelda until like Mega Man X. Mm -hmm. Like it seriously is insane about how good the user interface is in Zelda. The screen transitions, the maps in the dungeons, the way that the the they use screen scrolling to create, oh, here's the Triforce, here, do, what weapons do I have, all of that. The way that the attract mode tells a story and it has the music change and the flashing and all of the stuff. Like, the, the game is insanely technically advanced in the user interface point of view versus anything that came out at the time. Mm -hmm. You take that and then you put saving on top of that. This is... You can save. There's a second quest. You can save. It has amazing user user interface. It's like crazy. This is a game that came out three months before Dragon's Quest. Dragon's Quest is so far behind Zelda in the like user interface and comfort and technology and stuff. Great game. Doesn't hold a candle to Zelda in terms of game design. Yeah. You just mentioned the uh, Triforce a minute ago. I wanted to bring up something that I just learned about the Triforce. And here we are in 2020. It's been this many years and I'm still learning things about this game. So the original Zelda, uh, apparently Miyamoto, we all know the, tri the Triforce as this, you know, magical triangle, whatever thing. And, um, you know, you can place a, you know, grant a wish and all that stuff. But originally, he, from an article that I read, um, wanted the Triforce to be uh, a computer chip, and Link was actually going to be named Link because he was going to be a link between the past, which was this was was the game we're playing and then i think they were gonna do a future area in the game where you could then go to the future with this with this computer chip or something like that i don't know exactly but uh, i thought that that was really interesting in the fact that so they had i guess all kind of different ideas when originally designing the game and we just think of the game as as we know it now but it's funny to think back to the guys who actually made the game they had other things they might have done that they didn't end up doing with it which and is kind of interesting and now Miyamoto had to make the just the first part over and over again for his entire <laughs> life right. like never expanding outside of that because it was so well they've done a lot of things with with, yeah. with Zelda and I mean even in, in in a link to the past it's sort of a, a sort of a time travel thing I guess um or definitely with uh, Ocarina of Time, they got to do the time travel between him being, you know, the future and the past and everything. Um, but another thing he said was that Miyamoto, I always wondered if uh, Miyamoto was a fan of Lord of the Rings because Zelda is right. such a, you know, uh, fantasy thing. But uh, what he said in, uh, in an interview was that Miyamoto was actually a huge Disney fan and Link it was based off of Peter Pan, which I didn't realize. Oh, yeah. I can see it. Yeah. I, I started thinking about like what games were even close to Zelda in terms of their influence. And there were two, and I know that you have a one, but the two that I really focused on were Doom and Grand Theft Auto 3. Mm -hmm. I think that if you were looking at games that kind of fit in the same level of importance, and I really couldn't think of anything else. So speaking of Grand, Grand Theft Auto, though, um, like I always found when I when I would play Grand Theft Auto, sometimes it feels like you're playing Zelda as you're going yeah. around this open world. I remember playing like Vice City and Grand Theft Auto Three and all that, and it's like I kind of, in a way, loved that in the same way I love walking around Hyrule. It's kind of similar in a way. I got another one for you guys. If you were on a desert island and you had a choice to get an NES 
with Zelda or a GameCube with Wind Waker? Which one would you rather have? Can I pick a randomizer? <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, where's the, is there, are there Wind Waker randomizers? I'm really curious. Uh, I don't know about a Wind Waker randomizer, but if there's not, there should, there should be. I mean, I, I should throw out, you know, I, I talked about this before, but I love Wind Waker. I, I think it's a phenomenal yeah. game. People will immediately shit on Wind Waker because of the sailing between the islands. Yeah, that's what I don't like about it. Well, well really. yeah, but did you ever go through the game and try to collect everything? No. That's the difference. It's it's really a collection game, and yeah. um, in, in large part, I I did it once, and I uh, this is before ABGN and everything. This is a long, long time ago, and um, I did it once, and y y going through the ocean and going to every single island, and th that game came with a huge map, kind of kind of like that, you know, yeah. and you would you would fold out the big Wind Waker map. And everything was divided into a little uh, sector or quadrant or whatever. Uh, Ryan, you can tell me the correct terminology for that. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> yeah. um, but uh, everything's divided up into little squares, yeah. and you have to go to you know A one, B two, whatever, and you have to literally go to every single thing and make sure you've done everything in every single square and by doing that i got so much more out of wind waker and then you find that the ocean is actually not as um you know boring because people when they first put on wind waker they're just like oh i want to beat the game and yeah. i so that means what you're doing is you're traveling from island to island and you're just trying to get to the end of the game but if you don't think of it that way if you think of it more like i want to do like if you're being a completionist i guess is what i'm saying it's a lot more fun if you're being a completionist i think breath of the wild did a much better job at doing that than wind waker did but i think wind waker did a much better job being a zelda game yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> you know? <laughs> People's criticism of Zelda is usually that they keep remaking the same game over and over and over. And it's kind of like you have such a good game that it's kind of like if you have if you have something that works that well don't don't like break it so later on they start putting you know zelda characters into other into other games like they put you know link into dynasty warriors and then you have yeah, Hy hyrule, hyrule warriors. warriors and then they start to, there's like a tingle game and, and all this stuff yeah. and i feel like all these like other kind of in between games kind of dirty the main franchise a bit yeah you know what's funny when i was writing on the board the games we started writing like Hyrule Warriors and Four Swords and was the CDI Link's games. Crossbow training. And I just erased them. I'm like, no, we're not talking about. That. Yeah, it's like I think. Listen, I think Four Swords is yeah. a, is a good game. I, I think I, yeah. I had fun playing Four Swords, but I wish it wasn't Zelda. I wish it wasn't part of the Zelda universe. I right. like make it a different theme. I probably I probably would have given it more time if it wasn't a Zelda game because I mean I enjoyed playing it. We played it with Vinny and and James. Yeah, no, it's good. a fun game. It's just yeah. I don't want it to be a Zelda game. Yeah, uh, I don't know. So so anyway, I mean I the, those were kind of I really felt like we had to have this conversation about Zelda because we've kind of beat around the bush. Yeah, it's a good game. Yeah, it's fun to play, but we never really went in deep of why. Yeah. Well, I mean, I haven't even talked about uh, why I really like it, though. I mean, I have said this before. I don't really give a crap about the story elements because really it's like it's just it's the most basic but yet classic story that there is. It's, you know, good guy, bad guy, save the princess, you know, all, all that stuff. It's like that's not really to me what's that what's that interesting about it. It's really the exploration. Um, and Miyamoto had talked about that a lot, about how he was a kid and he would go around and he was able to just freely explore back then and he sort of missed that and wanted to incorporate that into a video game. And um, that, you know, going around and exploring and searching for things and then going into the dungeons um, is, is what makes it so good. And I, I like being able to get from dungeon to dungeon and, and, and doing the puzzles in the dungeons. And I found like some of the later Zelda games go off on, on so many like side stories and you know, they redid that formula plenty. Like on Game Boy Advance, they had the Oracle games, which I think are fantastic. And 
really that's what I like about Zelda. Like they can keep shitting out Zelda games forever as long as they give me like really good dungeons. And but I just kind of wish that they would make difficult dungeons. Wind Waker has awesome dungeons in that yeah. game. Like I, I love that, and I love the bosses in that game. I had a good time with Wind Waker. I, I yeah. you know, I was really into GameCube. Uh, and that was one of the biggest games, I think, on the system, really. And I picked it up once it came out. I think Ocarina of Time was a huge diversion point for the franchise. Mm -hmm. And it was probably because of the development cycle more than anything else. Because you notice before Ocarina of Time, there's one Hyrule. And you're exploring this this one world. It's it's You're, you're in Hyrule. Once you get to Ocarina of Time and subsequent Zeldas, you get to the point where we're visiting the Zora, we're visiting the Goron, we're visiting the Gerudo, we're going to these different places. And, you know, they did that because, I'm assuming, I don't know for sure, but I'm assuming that they did that because they needed to develop this world and that world and this world with separate groups or separate teams or separate points in time. And... I, that, I mean, it's nice to travel, but that took away from the size of the world because you knew that, oh, now I'm going to be doing the Zora part. Mm -hmm. And it's just in this section. It's it, I'm not in a big world. I'm in the, you know, Hyrule swimming pool. Now I'm in the the scary sand part. Now yeah. I'm in the, the mountain part. And they, like, they don't connect mm -hmm. at all. Um, there's also... Uh, we're, we're forgetting, I guess, the uh, 3DS game, like Link Between Worlds. I, I think they did yeah. a good job with that. I prefer those like top-down Zelda games. Yeah. I, for for me personally, um, I don't feel like they have gotten a th like 3D one right yet. Um, right. I, I'm still waiting for them to get like a 3D one like correct. Um, and I think, like I said, Wind Waker's awesome. Um, uh, Twilight Princess is, is a really good game, and I feel like Twilight Princess did have. It felt like Zelda, um, m much more so than you know Breath of the Wild. But I, I guess it's like for me because I, I fell in love with the original Legend of Zelda. I just always wanted them to make a game that feels like this game, but modern. And I'm not saying like they don't have to like literally re remake the exact dungeons or any anything, right. but make something that has this feel with modern graphics and i don't think they've ever really done it they've always gone off in strange directions yeah i mean i think it's amazing and i think it you know it's kind of a testament to what we're talking about in this video i could still play zelda today and have a good time i'm still all over it like it's great zelda's yeah. awesome and i would like to play a modern version with better graphics or have it you know just kind of iterate on that theme and you're right everybody who puts their own mark on zelda kind of takes something away from the original formula they may make something great on their own mm -hmm. but it, it's different from what zelda on nes was i'd like to say something really positive about something that they just recently did about zelda i absolutely love and think they did a fantastic job on um the new Link's awakening game it's awesome. I love it. Oh, I, beat, yeah. I beat it. Yeah. So, so when when they do a good job, I'm I'm I, like I'm here to say say it like yeah. that. That is, I love how it looks. I, I think there's some people that don't really like the claymation style. I think that fits Zelda perfectly. Um, go back and look at. Go back and play Link to the Past or the first Zelda game. Those games are bright, vibrant, colorful games. Zelda should not be a moody, dark, depressing thing. It's not It's not that type of world. And I think that they got it absolutely right uh, with Wind Waker. And I think they absolutely absolutely got it right with the new uh, Link's Awakening on Switch. So great job with that. But I think we, for as far as their main, like brand new game, I want the new Zelda game with that, you know, and they, they haven't quite gotten there yet. So I'm still waiting for that. Well, I can't wait to see what comes in Breath of the Wild 2. Oh, that's what's next? Yeah. It's just Breath of the Wild 2? Yeah. Well, that's kind of weird, though. I don't know. Well, I mean... I mean, I'm sure it's going to be awesome, and it's going to be, like, game of the year or whatever, right. like always, but it's <laughs> like, you know, like, the Breath of the Wild 2, it's like, well, what, why aren't you just... Who knows? You know? I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I know there's been some talk of it, but to me, Breath of the Wild came so close, this close to... To getting the classic Zelda formula, but there's just a few things that it missed, mm -hmm. which I mean, they were cool things, but they weren't Zelda. Um, I 
I'm just really curious what, how they go with it. I, I'm curious what they do after that, when they're done with Breath of the Wild too, what happens yeah. with that. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they will go into the future with computer chips like uh, yeah, maybe, maybe, the original maybe, idea or Maybe whatever. Miyamoto will finally get to tell the story that he wanted to. Future Zelda. Yeah. So I'm going to say something that might be a little controversial real quick. Sure. I've never beaten one Zelda game in my entire life. I've uh, I've played a bunch. Yeah. I've played almost every single one. I didn't haven't played uh, Twilight Princess, and I haven't played a lot of the handheld ones, but I did play like Link's Awakening. I've played all the the N64 Super regular Nintendo, and I've played uh, the newest one. So, so how, how do you feel about when you play a Zelda game that, what feeling do you get that you don't want to complete it? It's not, I, I don't know what it is. It's just, I get to a certain point and I just don't play it anymore. I don't know what it is. I like, and, and I love the games. I love uh, Link to the Past. Yeah. I love that game. But I've gotten into the dark world and I get four or five dungeons in or whatever it is, or like three or four dungeons in, and then I just and then I just stop playing. I play something else and then I just never play it again. And then by that time it's one of those things where it's like, well, I might as well just start the whole game over again. Right. Or uh even Wind Waker, I got to the part where you're you're fetching the Triforce shards. Oh, I hate that. Yeah, and I stopped playing. I got yeah. like six or seven of them and I stopped playing it. And then uh, Breath of the Wild, I played for maybe three hours and I just stopped playing it. And then I started watching other people. Like, that's one thing is I may not have beaten them, but I've watched, like, my buddy Marshall play through almost all of them yeah. several times. Like, I just sit and watch and play it. I, I, I kind of like watching people who have beaten them, who know how to play the game, better than I do figuring it out myself. Right, but I have massive respect for the game, and I understand its its contributions. And and, and it's it's like funny that. that you say that because you have that perspective where you haven't finished the game, and I I'm at the opposite end where I played it so many times that I'm like, I I have so like experienced that game like so much that I'm kind of like I don't even know what else to do with it. So I'm yeah. just I, I'm at the point where I'm just like okay, well, what other games are there? <laughs> because, yeah, like I just I'm on to other games. I mean that's the thing too is I've played probably every I played Skyrim, I've played Dark Souls, I've played so many other. So games. you beat Dark Souls, but you haven't beat I've any beat, Zelda's. Yeah, I've beaten Dark Souls. I've beaten uh, you know I wow. well I never beat Skyrim. I, that's another thing with Skyrim, though, and, and Fallout yeah. and all those. all those. I get into something else. Like, there's something, like, uh, Fallout, I got really into customizing my town in Fallout 4. Uh, New Vegas, I've beaten the story mode, and 3, I've beaten the story mode, but mm -hmm. I never beat the expansions. But I got more into finding the best weapons and armor, and then just walking around and enforcing my own justice. Yeah. Skyrim, I got into becoming the most powerful thing in all of Skyrim, and then... I just haven't beaten it. I never beat the stories. <laughs> I did every other thing possible. Yeah. I'm a. I am the the. Uh, uh, what's it called? A uh, a thane of every hold in Skyrim. I am. But the, you haven't beat I'm it. I'm the Archmage of Winterhold. I am like. I <laughs> I reunited the Thieves Guild. I am like. I like. I've done so much. I had where I did my smithing and everything, and I was I I could smith Daedra and Dragonbone armor. Right. Which took forever. Uh, I, you know, and then I, I just stopped playing it and, and now it's one of those things like, well, I'd love to get the remastered one, but do I really want I, to put 500 more hours into this game? I love this storyline. This guy comes in from, <laughs> w uh, from the out world somewhere yeah. and just breaks shit up. You just like yeah. ruined everything. No, I am pretty like... much. I, I destroyed Skyrim's economy yeah. uh, because I'm the richest person to the point where I, I used to just go and smith things yeah. to get my smithing up, and then I would walk with pounds and pounds of shit to the point where I, I can't even walk. I'm just yeah. slowly moving. Then go and enchant all of it, and then I, since everybody's broke and I have more money than God in the game, I just drop all the armor all over the floor. So right now, the, what's his name? The guy who lives in Whiterun Castle, who's like their wizard, every time he walks, he's walking through hundreds of pieces <laughs> of iron armor that's, you know, enchanted with whatever shit enchantment I need yeah. to just get my shit up. So like I I became the most powerful thing. Meanwhile, what's his name? The the dragon Alduin or whatever is is wreaking havoc, and I'm just sitting in in Proud Spire Manor, chilling out with my wife Lydia and our house Carl. And uh, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> it's a good time. Yeah. Well, now we know. Now we time. know why you didn't beat any Zelda games because you were too yeah. busy doing that. That's probably yeah. what it is. I've played so many like open world games where I've just spent so much 
time 100% like try, not even 100%ing them like not even percenting them just kind of going off on my own and doing whatever I wanted but I don't know I have a bad attention span with games I need to like on that note do we have any parting thoughts on Zelda I mean, I feel like Zelda is a game that you can just sit and talk about forever. There's so, there's so much to talk about with it. Um, so at some point, the conversation needs to needs to come to it come come to an end. I don't know. <laughs> if if you like video games, Zelda has impacted your experience. Yeah, it's awesome. It's gone for this long. So many games are based on it, and so many games will be based on the lessons learned from it. And uh, if you want to see where it started, you know, you should check out the original. There's a million ways to play it, a million virtual consoles, emulation, the original console. You can get one of those cheap carts on Amazon for 20 bucks, like whatever. You can get this game and you should experience it. And it'll tell you a lot about pretty much the best that the 8-bit era had to offer. And it set the foundation for many, many things that came after. Can't can't beat that. <laughs> can't top that one. <laughs>